Hey, y'all, it is Thursday. We've got another episode of the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode 260. And if you are not watching this on a Thursday morning, right when it comes out, whenever you're watching it, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Uh, like us on all the socials. Uh, subscribe to us on, on YouTube. This is a weekly show that we've done uh, for a long, long time. Uh, and my day one person, since day one, by my side, Mr. Jason Robertson, the owner of Outdoor Legacy. Uh, how are you doing, sir? Uh, you just said right before we started recording, it said you said that it looked like somebody punched you in the eyes. So kind I, of explain that. I do, that. man. I, I, I've, <laughs> yeah, I've, I don't want y'all to watch this and think I just drug up out of bed or – or I had a late night. Uh, man, That's probably just, what they think of me every time because I'm always it probably got, is. Yeah, it's probably as much no, eye it's, problems it's all I, this I've had, sinus you know. junk, man. It is. Uh, it is spring in East Texas. Uh, we it basically is. live in a rainforest, so it means everything oh, is blooming. And been, yeah. And yeah. So we've got a review uh, today. We've got the Pulsar Talion XG35 review. This is uh, not to be confused with the Talion XQ38 review that we did uh, a while back. It's, gosh, it's been quite a while since we've done that review. But this is the XG35. Before we jump into the review, as we always do, we're going to have specs walk around the scope. We're going to tell you our, our likes, uh, dislikes, who it might be good for, overall thoughts, everything you need to know. But before we do it, I want to say something because this is important, Jason. Um, you know, um, we've talked about internet and Facebook scammers selling uh, scopes online and how it's become the problem. I don't know. We haven't talked about it and we didn't talk about it in our pre-show meeting. Uh, Pulsar, the manufacturer overseas, yeah. their, their social media account, they made a post specifically about uh, internet scammers and, I, and strictly or, or mainly about social media scammers. It is getting to be a terrible problem buying scopes really from people that you don't know on social medias, whatever platform it is. Um, yeah. What we want to invite you to do because a lot Individuals, of people- Individuals mostly exactly. is the issue, and, yeah. Yeah, and there are some good Facebook companies out there that are geared more towards fa Facebook sales that are good, but there's there seems to be a higher than ever amount of scamming mm. going on. Uh, but what I would say is, um, and a lot of people and a lot of companies say that we're crazy for doing this, but we invite you to call us. Uh, we want you to call yeah. us. And, and the reason why they say it's crazy because they say you probably spend all of your time on, on the phone. And that's true. But we do that's get true. everybody called back. This is a big purchase, a big investment. We want you to call us. We want to talk to you about it. Um, and we invite you to do, do so. 877-350-1818. Uh, you can find all of the products, OutdoorLegacyGear.com, but you can always talk to me. Uh, you can talk to uh, Ashley, our other salesman, who is out in the field testing these optics as well, more behind the scenes. Uh, and then you got Jason as well. That can uh, we can all help you out with in the field experience. Eight seven seven three five zero one eight one eight. Beware of internet scams. Don't yeah. Buy from and, and people Facebook, that buy from people that tell you that. That, that you can talk to on the phone <laughs> is, is yeah, you know. and and um, Pulsar actually said on that post that uh, beware of, of people selling the scopes too cheap. I mean, oh, that's yeah. it, it's literally exactly. that's the red flag when somebody, uh, you know, guys, we'll, we'll talk price real quick. I mean, this scope right here, uh, first thing, it's going to be forty two ninety nine, and that is a price that's set by Pulsar by the manufacturer. And a lot of people go, well, that's not fair. That's not right. That's how a lot of things are. Uh, you know, Apple has the same sort of thing. If you buy an iPad or an iPhone or whatever, the price is generally going to be the same all over. And and what that does is it allows them to make sure that they've got dealers that are out there doing a good job, providing customer service like us, providing reviews, doing these things. Uh, we can do that. And it, it kind of sets a standard. You know, Rolex doesn't want uh, people selling those Rolexes for, for pennies on the dollar out of their mm -hmm. trunk. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that that happens with these thermal scopes. And so uh, this this is what Pulsar is saying. If, if it looks too cheap, it probably is. If, if somebody's having to discount it, uh, just it screams scam. So so watch out for that. Again, um, Hans is right. There's a lot of, of legitimate good dealers out there. And you want to make sure that if you're unsure, you talk to them on the phone and you're going to know uh, you know, normally pretty yeah, well, quick. So, it, so it, it goes back to the fact that if, if you can't get them on the phone to buy a scope from them, um, what's the likelihood you're going to get them on the phone if there's a problem with it or you got a question about it. And that's what I think yeah. what people appreciate about us, but thank y'all, um, you know, for, yeah. for keeping us busy. We are very blessed, very and, grateful. And, and, uh, we've got a lot of friends in this business that do a great job and hopefully y'all out there think that we are 
one of the companies that do a good job. So really appreciate yeah. it. So absolutely. If you're looking to buy this optic or any other optic, uh, we would love to have your business. Hans is right. We don't mind talking to you. Uh, you know, helping our customers is what we do. Uh, if, if you're going to go buy it from somewhere else, don't call us, but that's another story. <laughs> 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 just, just, just being honest, we're, we're too busy for that, but right. yeah, we do want to talk to you, help you figure out what you need. This scope right here, let's jump into the specs. Uh, as already said, it is $42.99, $4,300 if we round that up. It is, again, the Pulsar Talion XG35. Now, I know that with, with Pulsar's naming system, a lot of people get super confused and they say mm -hmm. all this that doesn't mean anything or it doesn't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you real quick um, so that you know what XG indicates. XG indicates it is a 640 by 480 resolution 12 microns. Right. That is exactly what it means. And you go, well, hang on a minute. What's the XP? Well, the XP is 640 by 480 17 microns. So that's just that's that's the difference here is what this is so this is their 640 version of the talion again at 12 microns uh, the unit is a 50 hertz refresh rate uh, it's got a sub 40 netd uh, sensor rating that's the sensitivity there mm -hmm. um, it is a it's a 2 to 16 power it's a two power base magnification has digital zoom going up to 16. It does have video and audio recording. It's got a 1024 by 768 AM OLED display. Uh, that is a, a high-end display. It has got uh, Wi-Fi built in for streaming. You can use the Pulsar Stream Vision 2 app. Put that on your phone or tablet, and you can uh, live stream right over there to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it has picture-in-picture, -picture, multiple color palettes. Um, reticle options, a, a ton of them. I haven't counted them, but it's just what all the normal mm -hmm. uh, Pulsar reticles are, uh, which is a bunch. Uh, it weighs 29.5 ounces with the battery in and a quick detach mount on the bottom of it. And battery life. We're going to talk a little more about the batteries. Uh, Hans is going to do a walk around of this mm -hmm. unit in a few minutes and show you as a fully removable, rechargeable battery. Uh, so there's no internal batteries uh, on our bench test, turning the unit on, letting it run, uh, sitting there. You know, again, this is ideal conditions, but um, I did that test and I got six and a half hours on a single APS 5T battery. Uh, again, I'm going to come back to this battery info in just a minute. Uh, it's got a detection range, uh, according to Pulsar, of 19 1,914 yards. That's, again, detecting a hot object is out there. Um, identification range, this is something that Hans and I come up with on our own. This is subjective. It's an opinion. Uh, your opinion could be that it's a lot further. Your opinion could be that it's less. We try to take the conservative, up-the-middle, you know, normal, reasonable approach, and we're saying... Four to 500 yards. You ought to be able to, with some experience, ID a hog or a coyote in normal conditions at four to 500 yards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, high resolution is going to allow you to zoom in a little bit if you need to. And I think that's very reasonable for this unit. It does have the uh, standard Pulsar three year warranty with the great customer service offered by Pulsar USA here in Texas. Um, I want to jump back to these batteries real quick, have a quick discussion on this. So Hans is going to pull that thing out here and in, in maybe in a minute at some point and show it to you, show you what the battery looks like. Um, it is an APS-5, and uh, the original Talion XQs, when they first came out, they had an APS-5, but up on the top of it, there is a little... Um, adapter that has to be there that's not on a normal APS-5. If you're using those APS-5s in um, Axions or, or other uh, optics, they don't need this little adapter, but they do need it in the Talion. So mm -hmm. Pulsar was throwing these little, you know, you know, little cost a dime. I mean, little bitty thing size, <clears throat> a little bit bigger than a pencil eraser, and you would, you know, just slide it on there and make it work for the Talion. Mm -hmm. Well, now they're making a battery that has that little adapter permanently attached on it. That way, 
you don't have to worry about losing it. You have to be changing them in the field. It's just the right battery that you need. And it's going to be called an APS 5T for right. Talion T. Same exact price, same exact battery, except it's got this little adapter on the end. There are some issues. Sometimes after a lot of use, they were getting loose, coming mm -hmm. off. They weren't staying on there well. This just alleviates any of those issues. This way it's got a good, snug, firm fit in there. Um, now, here's the news that I really like. Um, and this is right now. Um, it didn't happen originally. Pulsar changed this. Um, I talked to Pulsar actually today before mm -hmm. we recorded this. I wanted to be sure. Uh, as far as they know, there's no plans to change this. So this <laughs> is going to be uh, late April of 2023. But as of right now, both Talions, the XQ and the XG, come with two APS 5T mm -hmm. batteries. You get two batteries. So I know we're sitting here talking about a six and a half hour runtime, which, you know, in the field, a normal uh, using it, recording it, turning it off and on, you're probably going to see that battery life drop down into the five, five and a half hour range. Maybe, you know, maybe up closer to six, but I'd say five to five and a half is very reasonable. Well, you've got a spare battery in your pocket that you can slap in there. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really nice. Love that Pulsar is including that. Those batteries only cost $79. So if you need a third or a fourth, they are available. And the, the APS 5Ts are not uh, on the market in the U.S. at the recording of this. Again, uh, last of April. But Pulsar said they should be here uh, in the next month or so. So, you know, those will be coming. You can still use a regular APS-5 with that little adapter. But yeah. anyway, a lot of information there, but just kind of wanted to throw that out again. It's the XG35, and it is forty-two ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. Hans, give him yeah. the walk around. Yeah, so here's the battery that Jason was talking about. This is the APS5T. The T stands for Talion. As you can see, it's when and if you don't, if you never saw the previous one, it, it's a little bit different. It's got this little plastic uh, nipple on the end. Can you say that? It, can you say that on? I, I was avoiding saying okay, that word. Okay, let's not time. say that. Yeah. It's more of a, a plastic hook that hooks into the cradle <laughs> more securely and snugly on there. Snugly on there. Gosh, man. Wow, uh, this is the, the word nipple south. threw me off. <laughs> yeah. Mm, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we got the, uh, here's the tally on XG35 right here. The battery compartment, want to open this up for you. It's got a slide lock on top. Flips open, completely removable battery that fits in there. Uh, as you can see, the cradle comes down, locks snugly in place. You can tell when you you know put that little switch over that it's locked down on there very, very tight. Uh, you've got a spring-loaded plastic lens cover, uh, objective lens cover. You've got your focus, your know, uh, objective, objective lens focus adjustment ring right here on the top. It just slides back and forth. It's got this nice little tab on it to help you... Uh, do that especially in the dark and just trying to get that thing turned as easy and as quickly as possible get your blue power button right there so you know how to power and it's staring you right there in the face uh, to turn this unit on and off but the best thing about these things and the design of it is really right here on the eyepiece you know you do have just like the uh the other uh you know the talion xq38 or even the thermions you get your little rubber uh, eyepiece diopter focus right here you turn uh, to focus the screen and depending on if you're wearing glasses or corrective lenses or however you know good or bad your eyes are that's what you can fix to to see the the letters and the numbers on the screen better but up here on the top you've got your uh, you got your record button your magnification button and your menu button but this rubber or plastic piece on top this round piece actually turns and that's how you maneuver, go up and down in the menu. Very cool design right there out of the way. Uh, I think it really avoids them having to put another button or dial on this thing um, like they would with the Thermion where it has that on the dial on the side. But very cool design. And, of course, we've got it mounted right now. This is the Zero Delta mount, uh, two hundred right, at, right at close to 250 yeah, bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, spring loaded right here on the side to get this thing on and off. Returns to zero. Very, very high quality mounts. Uh, very popular mounts. A lot of people know, and that's a very familiar name as well, Z uh, Zero Delta. We don't talk a lot about them here on the show, but they make one for this Talion uh, scope, and it works out very, very well. Been able to take it on and off 
uh, very nicely. Here's the mount that it comes with. This is the factory mount. Also, Jason said that it does come with an extra battery for the time being. We don't know when uh, that's going to end, but it does come with an extra battery. Here's the, the factory mount. Not a bad mount. Um, uh, quite a bit bigger and longer uh, than the Zero Delta. It's not a quick release mount. Um, you, you know, not this a is, return to zero. Uh, not a return to zero. Not a quick release. It's not going to. This is what you're going to want to use or get away with if you're just going to be uh, leaving that scope on the rifle and not taking it off very often at all. Maybe once or twice a, uh, a season to be able to hunt whatever you're trying to to hunt out in the field. But that is about it, y'all. Uh, yeah. That's uh, the one one quick thing I want to note: there is also a Pulsar QD mount, um, hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we do sell those mounts. We've got them. Uh, that's the same mount that worked with the, the trails um, and some of the older scopes. That that mount does work with the Talions as well. Um, it's fine. It's a QD mount. It does its job. Uh, you know, if you're looking, and it does fine. It, you know, I get you know, 100 bucks versus 250 mm -hmm. What do I do here? I think it comes down to your budget. If you want to know that you're getting a high-end American-made mount, um, return to zero guaranteed. I mean, it's the legit, those, those zero Delta D locks are really, really nice mounts. I would say go that route. If you're kind of like, Hey, you know what? I mean, maybe the Pulsar little QD will do fine for me. That's fine. I think it comes down to a budget and kind of how you are on mounts. If, if you're very OCD about, I want a really, really good quality, a high end mount, then I would definitely go with something like that, that zero Delta. Um, so, Hans, let's jump on in here. I know we're rolling through this review, and, and uh, I want to talk about the likes and the dislikes. And, guys, we do this on every show, and uh, every time we review something, we talk about our likes, we talk about our dislikes. And it's, it's tough because we take scopes that we really, really like, mm -hmm. and we pick them apart, and we tell you what's wrong with them. And a lot of times it turns people off because they're like, Oh my gosh, I love this scope, but you said that you mm -hmm. didn't like X, Y, Z. And I'm thinking, well, but there's, there's no perfect scope. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're nitpicking, yeah. but I'm going to tell you, we had a little bit of a problem here in our pre-show game plan. Um, we couldn't come up with a lot that we don't like about this scope and, and kind of going back to some of our notes and things when we reviewed the, uh, the XQ, uh, 38, Talion is the same issue. There's mm -hmm. just, I mean, we, we have to go over the design. We have to look right. at things that, you know, for the price, what is it? We, we're harder on scopes that cost more, uh, you know, value for the dollar. We really, really like this scope, and there's just not a whole lot about it. I think uh, the, the, the things we brought up are kind of the same things we brought up on the Talion XQ38. Number one, we're going to laugh about it. We're going to joke about it. A lot of guys look at this scope and they say it looks like a flashlight. It looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> and uh, we can we can joke. I don't know that, that Pulsar thinks I think we were the ones that funny, started but, saying yeah. that first before anybody else. We might have started that because I think that was probably one of the first things we, we said about the Talion we, XQ38. We might have. Yeah. We might have started it. But, but it's true. It, it, it's I get it. But But at the same time, it is way smaller than something mm -hmm. like a Thermion. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we do like that it is a compact style for guys that don't want the full size. Now, I, I, you know, Hans brought up a good point, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his point here and steal it because I'll just do all the, the our quote, negatives because these are really not negatives. But he made the point that this is kind of an in-between. It's way smaller than a Talion, but it's a little bit bigger than some of the other more compact scopes on the market. And even you take the old, uh, now discontinued, um, uh, Pulsar Core RXQ30V. That was a little smaller, more compact style scope than this. Okay, so it's a little bit longer. Yes, you can use it as a handheld. Uh, I don't think it's as comfortable as, again, if it was maybe two inches shorter. Definitely works for that, but it's not as ideal mm -hmm. as some of the more compact scopes. So, you know, I, I guess we could say it's an in-betweener. You know, it's yeah. it's not quite uh, a, a Talion, I'm a Talion, a Thermion full size, uh, and it's just a little bit bigger than some of the more compact scopes. But again, I don't really know if that's a negative, but we're going to put it over here. <laughs> and then, again, digging, digging, digging really low. I'm going to say, you know, again, I don't even know if this is worth mentioning, but I'm not a big fan of the stock mount. If you're going to mount this on and, you know, a, a bolt action rifle, a fixed stock rifle, I would first say 
really you need to consider a Thermion. That's what the Thermion is built for. So if you're going to a bolt gun, first thing I'd say is just get a Thermion. I mean, that that I think that's a better option. But if you're like, no, I really, really want this scope, um, then you're going to need to put a Picatinny rail on your rifle and you're going to ne need to use the stock mount. It is a longer mount um, and it's going to allow you to get that eye relief back there mm -hmm. that you need to get the scope back. Um, but I wish that it, you know, came with a QD mount. We can yep. say that about every scope we sell. And, yeah. You know, I just, I, I wish it did. Not not a huge fan of the, the big long mount. Again, unless you're going on a bolt gun. I, I, if I'm going to put it on an AR, I'm going to go to some kind of a QD mount. Even if I'm not taking it off and on, I just think it's smaller, it's lighter weight, looks a little better. So there are my very, very weak list mm -hmm. of dislikes, which is basically nothing. Yeah. Um, Hans, go ahead. I would like to, to redeem myself for rambling about the dislikes, but go ahead and tell them about some of the things we like about it because that's a big list. Yeah, you know, this is, and we'll talk about how this compares to the XP50, the Thermion XP50 Pro and the and the Pulsar uh, Thermion XG. Yeah, we'll do that in just a minute. We'll do that here in a minute. But what I want to say is, you know, this is Pulsar's, uh, we've all seen the trend. We know what's going on. The uh, There are other companies that are coming out with very price conscious 640 resolution scopes. And this is Pulsar's um, attempt to be more competitive in that lower $4,000 price range 640 resolution optic. And I'm going to tell you, they have they did a good job. And the reason why is because they kept a, a lot of their, I mean, I think they kept all of their full function menu items available. You know, the mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, the video and audio. They didn't skimp with any, really any of the features. Uh, I would say in, in the battery system to a lot of people might be an improvement because it is a fully removable battery and that makes people a lot more comfortable. So yes, I mean, you're getting an, a 640 resolution optic that's more uh, price conscious in a lower um, budget bracket for a 640 resolution scope, but you're getting a lot of the same features um, with all of the, all of the uh, reticles, the reticle color options, picture in picture display, Wi-Fi streaming, uh, all of that stuff is still included. You got a great battery system now that with a fully removable battery, you're getting an extra battery. I say all that to say this. This is a lower price optic, but they really, I can't say that they that they skimped on anything, Jason. You know so, what I mean? Like, so, but, yeah. but again, we'll talk about what the picture image looks like compared to the others. Yeah. But as far as features and, uh, you know, accessories, I, I think other than not having a QD mount, um, which they don't which, on any which other the Thermions don't either. Don't so, either. No. So uh, they didn't skimp. Uh, they didn't skimp at no, all. No, you. Yeah, I was sitting here the whole time. And I was anxious because you were saying, you know, most of the features, and they didn't skimp on much. I'm like, they're they're every feature yeah. that is in their most expensive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, current model is is in this scope. I yeah. mean, the menu is the same. The features, the functions. Uh, I mean, no, it doesn't have a laser rangefinder, but only two of the Thermions or three of the Thermions have mm -hmm. that. So, no, I mean, other than that, I mean, what you're paying for that, right. it has all the features. Yeah. It really does. And I'm going to say something here. I just made a couple quick notes. Some things that I really do like. Number one, the price, forty two ninety nine. Now, this is, you know, Hans made the point that, you know, we know what they're doing and we get it. I'm glad they're doing it. They're mm -hmm. trying to to compete with their, there's now there are six forties that are that are in this, you know, uh, $4,000 range. They're getting in that game. This is the least expensive 640 rifle mounted thermal scope that Pulsar has ever released in the U.S. market. Yeah. $5,000 has been their threshold. $49.99. They have never released a thermal 640, again, scope, rifle scope, mm. for less than $5,000. They did it right here. Uh, right. $42.99. So guys that are always saying, you know, man, the prices are how it this is the trend we're, we're moving yeah. that way we're, we're getting uh you know better and better and better and the prices are are dropping so this mm -hmm. is a good thing now size uh, again we kind of joked that it's an in-between but it I, I mean i like the size i like that yeah. it's small it's compact um you know if if you are looking for if you want pulsar like man i love pulsars but i need something to take off the rifle and, and throw in my bag when I go deer hunting or what, this is it. I mean, this mm -hmm. thing is, is, is uh, sl I don't know if this is a good word. We're going to use a bunch of words that are weird. <laughs> Slender. <laughs> it's skinny. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's small. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it, 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 that is one thing. 
where it's a little bit longer maybe than some of the compact scopes right. out there. It's it's way smaller around. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so I, I like that. Uh, you know, reticles. This is something I'm going to touch on real quick. No one, no one on the, I'm going to say U.S. market, because that's all we're worried about. No one on the U.S. market has anywhere near the number of reticles in their scopes that Pulsar does. I mean, it's a goofy amount of reticles. And if you don't like one of those, then man, I don't know what to tell you, you know, because <laughs> you, most of these companies are giving you anywhere from, from four to, to five, maybe mm -hmm. seven, uh, you know, Pulsar's got, I don't know what it is, 13, 14, it's a bunch they and a lot of best, different styles. Definitely have the best yeah. reticles and I th they've got the best reticle color options in my opinion as well too because y'all i'm in love with the yellow reticle now uh, and it, i guess it has something to do with my eyes and, and the different colors that my eyes picked up better but that that yellow reticle man it just stands out so I, good it does so i like the they call it i think they call it blue but it looks kind of purplish to mm -hmm. me i really like that one um i'm gonna tell you something else and I'm, we're getting we're getting in the weeds here but this is talking about the likes what I like is when you change the the reticle color, whether it is yellow or green or red or blue or orange, and there's all these colors, it's a soft color. Yeah. Some of these other scopes, you change it from like black or white, mm -hmm. red or green, it's like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I mean, it's just like in your face, yeah. very, exactly. very bold and hard. Yep. Man, these are not. These no. are really, really nice. So anyway, I, I, I like that. Again, battery. Hans has settled this. I'm just getting my little, this is on my list. Again, fully removable, fully rechargeable. You know, it's coming with two. We think that's going to continue. Hope so. E either way, it's affordable. $80 battery, $79. Uh, good battery life. Really, really like it. Now, let's let's jump in here because I don't. I know we're going to run out of time in, in just a minute. So we haven't even got to who it's good for. But I'm going to do this really quick. Um, a lot of guys are like, oh, man, it's a $4,300 scope. I guess this is replaced the XP50. It's as good as the XP50. Wait a minute. It says XG. So you're saying this is the exact same image quality that I'm going to get out of the new Thermion 2 XG50 LRF. That's $6,000, right? I'm getting it for $4,300. No. Um, with the price does come a reduced image quality. Now, that sounds like, well, man, that's terrible. That's not sales 101. Uh, but but it is. It's, it's still really, really good 640. And I'd go as far as to say this. It's as good or better than... I'm, I'm going to say most, and, and maybe most all is the right word, of Pulsar's previous discontinued 640 optics, okay? So if, if you had a, a 640 from, you know, a couple years ago, whether it was an XP or an XG, I think this unit is going to be as good as that, mm -hmm. uh, possibly better, depending on what model you had, um, you know, all those sort of things. So again, that I'm happy to see that. But I would say that if you're looking for the absolute best image quality, then you're going to have to spend some more money. You're going to have to go to that XP for, for $5,000. Um, if you want higher magnification, that XG, um, you know, Thermion is, is a three power. So you're going to have to go up to pay for that as well. What I do think is value for the dollar, it's fantastic. The image quality is really good on this unit. We just talking about it here. Four to 500 yards ID range. It is a two power scope. Uh, Hans, I'm going to roll right into kind of who this is good for. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that with a two power, this is not for the coyote hunter that's wanting to shoot coyotes at four or 500 yards. That's just not what this scope is for. You need to look at a, a, a three power optic for that. That's where I'd say you need to go to the XG, uh, you know, next g50 lrf that's where you need to go uh if you're shooting hogs maybe you're shooting coyotes and you're doing everything within that um 300 yards and in again not that you couldn't shoot further with it okay not that it won't id but i'm just talking about the magnification you're shooting 300 yards and in and i'd say most of your shots are probably going to be 200 yards and in and maybe most of those shots are going to be under 150 man this is in your wheelhouse mm -hmm. not because of the image quality because of the magnification and so uh, again, I guess the only point putting a bow on that 
is you're getting a very good image quality that is a great value for the dollar. Uh, but if you go to Pulsar's higher, more expensive units, you are going to get a better image quality. You're going to pay for what you get, but you're getting uh, in this unit as good as you would have gotten, you know, a couple of years ago, spending way more from Pulsar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Jason, I agree with you 100%. 2 to 16 power. There's a lot of people out there now that are using thermal optics on so many different things. You get calls or like, I'm – I deer hunt with it. I coyote hunt. I, I want to hog hunt. I come to Texas <laughs> once a year to hog hunt. What I would recommend, and I tell you this all the time, Jason, you probably say the same thing. You decide on an optic for whatever you're going to use it the most for. So you get coyote mm -hmm. hunters that say, you know, I'm, I'm a coyote hunter and this is the yardage that I shoot. But once a year I come to Texas and we shoot hogs really close. So I need to do something to do, does both. Well, it's really hard to do, you know, get all the check, you know, check all the boxes off on every optic. Um, but you want to find something that's going to be the correct magnification, the correct scope for what you're doing most often. And if you are somebody that your um, average shot definitely is going to be, you know, under 150 yards on average and, and more even um, in that 100 yard and under range, uh, I would say this is going to be a, an, an excellent choice. I would, I would, um, say that if you and and when you say when we say you know average under 150 yards or under 100 yards that does not mean at all that you cannot shoot 200 250 yards that does not mean that at oh, all but that's right. what you're gonna yeah. this is what your average shot and then just that's just being comfortable with the magnification level um you want to the goal for an optic is to buy the correct magnification so you don't have to magnify the image that much to be able to take a good mm -hmm. shot you want to it's a it's a difficult balance jason that you and i try to discuss with people on the phone is the right magnification without giving up too much field of view and that's where you get into the a point of of uh, what um really being honest with yourself and and say you know this is my average shot uh, it, not how far I want to be able to shoot, but this is what my average shot is. But I really do. Anybody using this optic, 150 yards and in, I would say it'd be good for uh, if you are uh, varmint hunting, coon hunting, uh, hog hunting. I mean, the two power is a very good uh, general starting magnification. And, you know, we talked about the fact of you being able to pull it off and use it as a scanner, use it in the deer stand. Two power uh, it is a, a, a great, has a great wide field of view for scanning back and forth. So the, there's so many things that you can do with this. Like I said, if you, you have something, you know, to have something that you can hunt within the woods at 25, 35 yards, uh, but still pull off a 300 yard shot. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty yeah, good. Han, Hans is saying something here. I think super important. And it's making me think about the next time we talk about and have a show mm -hmm. where we really get into choosing an optic and, and we do those from time to time and kind of, you know, how you need to do that, which I think we need to probably revisit. He's making a good, good point. And the mistake that I know I hear on the phone and I know he does too, is, is guys, they want to buy for the extreme. You need to buy for the everyday ordinary and then don't worry about the extreme. You know, make it work for the extreme. And what I mean by that is a guy go, well, I, I mean, every once in a while, I'm going to shoot a coyote at 350 yards. Every once in a while, he's going to get hung up. So I need a scope I can shoot 350 yards all the time with. Well, wait a minute. That scope is going to be terrible for shooting 50 to 100 yards or right. 50 to 125 because you've just bought this long-range scope. But but then you admit, well, yeah, but most of the time I'm shooting, you know, whatever, 75 to 200 yards. Mm. Well, that's a different optic, you know. Yeah, yeah but I got to be able to – well, I understand that, that that Hail Mary Blue Moon <sighs> – you can, you know, you can, you, you can force the other scope into that, right. that, that once in, you know, once a month or once every season or whatever you need to buy. Hans is right. Buy for what you're doing most of the time. Mm -hmm. And again, that's kind of a, a whole nother topic and a whole nother show. But I think putting a wrap on this, in my opinion, uh, I think Hans is right. Don't get scared that we're trying to say you can't go shoot, you know, two, 250, 300 or further with this. We're talking about the, the magnification. You know, those two powers are really going to be for the guys that are doing a lot of 200 yard and in, as he said, um, and maybe 150 and in. 
But if you need to take the 250 or the 300 yard shot, the, the, the image quality is there. Look, you zoom this thing up, you go to four power, you're at a 320 resolution, uh, still got a nice image. And I think, you know, you, you can, you can do a lot with the scope image quality is very good for $4,300. Uh, it definitely, and this is a question that everybody wants to know, but it definitely holds its own and maybe even outperforms some of the competition, uh, of these, um, I'm going to just going to say sub yeah. whatever, $4,500, uh, you know, 640 scopes. Yeah. Comparable so scopes. Definitely yeah. Co comparative scopes in the market. It, yeah. it, it holds its own and, and outperforms some of those. So, yeah. you know, if you want to get in the nitty gritty details of, you know, how does this compare to that? You can holler at us and, you know, give us a call. We'll be glad to help you when you get ready to, to make that purchase, <laughs> but want to know which one to buy. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're, we're glad to help you do that. But overall love the scope. I think this, what this scope is for, and again, I know we, we've already mentioned the XP50 and all this, and I know there's guys that are like, okay, but I still don't know which one to get. If you're willing to spend $5,000 and then buy a mount, you know, so let's just, you know, that that's, you don't get a spare battery. So let's just say you're five grand, you spend $200 on a mount, um, you know, you buy another battery. Say you got $5,300, $5,400 in it, set up, ready to go. All right, spare batteries, everything. If that price doesn't bother you, then the XP50, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a better image quality. Still a two power. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the that's the Pulsar competition of this scope. Pulsar is not replacing the XP50 Thermion with this scope. I'd say go to that. But if you're one of these guys that's like, listen, I was really wanting to spend about thirty five hundred, four thousand right. dollars. But if I can get forty three hundred. And I'm already getting a spare battery in here, and it's got a mount. May not be my favorite mount, but I can use the mount. You know, to see what I'm saying here. Yeah. I mean, when you put this yeah. apples and apples, you're saving a thousand bucks, and there's a whole lot of guys that I get it. You're looking at it, going, I can get a good Pulsar 640 for forty three hundred dollars. That's a lot cheaper than five or fifty three, fifty four. So that's who it's good for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree hundred percent, and I would say. Um, we like the Talion design and y'all do too, because <laughs> the Talion XQ38 oh, yeah. have flown off the shelves since they were first introduced. Um, and it's not just because of price. Yes, the Talions are hitting a price point, but y'all like the design. Um, there are some of you that don't love the Thermion design, uh, and y'all are scooping these up crazy, but this is a very very good scope. And if you are interested in learning more about it, you want to hear more details. Uh, if you saw, you know, as we were doing this video, we had a lot of thermal video playing and thanks to, uh, to, to Jason and Ashley and getting a bunch of content for us, me sitting up in a stand, uh, you know, for two hours with hogs and poison ivy all over trees, uh, getting all this video. We do all of it to give you the most accurate information that you can find anywhere else, any other show. Uh, we, we, I don't know if it's, if it's still true, but we used to say back in the day, this is a first and only, uh, show podcast dedicated to night hunting, uh, hunting for hogs, coyotes, whatever, but night hunting and thermal show. And like I said, don't know after four or five years, if that's still true, but a lot of you, our audience is growing and thank you. But if you want to buy an optic. If you want to buy a scope, 877-350-1818, outdoorlegacygear.com. We'd love to get your business. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, you know, we do these shows because of, yes, we do it because it helps business, but we do it uh, knowing that hopefully if you see this, it'll answer some of your questions and make it a little bit less confusing. And that's really what it's all about. Um, if you want to find out more about Outdoor Legacy as a company. Go check out, I already mentioned it, but OutdoorLegacyGear.com. A lot of people, uh, it's amazing, Jason, how many people um, do a lot of uh, research on the, on, the, on the company's history. And there's a lot of people that compliment um, the company. Like, I love your company. I love, the, I love your uh, Christian um, background and, and, and all of y'all are proud Christian and, and not shy to talk sure. about it. Uh, the start of the company, right. they read the bios and they just really love it. I'd invite you go read, 
um, the bio of this, this company. Um, it's a, a very good story, a uh, very heartwarming story of how this company started. And uh, Jason, it's been a while since you talked about it, so someday we need to talk about it again. But uh, anyway, um, we go check out the website. Go check out Outdoor Legacy on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, you can find all of our past episodes on the late night vision show.com. You can find Ashley uh, over on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube at row ETX R O W E ETX. Uh, and then you can find me Hans ETX on YouTube, on Instagram, now on Facebook. Uh, give us all likes, follows, um, interact with us. We'd love to talk to you and we'd love to take your phone calls. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this show. Hope that you learned a little something from it. Hey, listen, uh, it's the end of the show. I know it's late. We should have done this at the beginning, but we've got some big news mm -hmm. coming up on this show. There's some big announcements coming uh, in the next week or two. So if you are still with us at this point, uh, mm -hmm. tune in. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be maybe you have a bonus show coming out on a Wednesday, May 3rd. So uh, be, be looking for that. And then uh, again, following up on, on the next day, on normal mm -hmm. Thursday, have uh, another show. So got some exciting stuff coming. Thank y'all for sticking with us. Uh, we hope to see y'all again here next week. But between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes. Mm -hmm.